from the most personal inner planet to the most furthest out. The whole spectrum from moon all the way out to Pluto. This aspect more than any other relates to Kalima, the dark mother, the chthonic goddess. It is shamanic and powerful. The underworld journey that moon Pluto makes is a journey into the dark feminine, into the dark goddess and the chthonic, into the wild, wild feminine in each of us and the wild feminine in nature, the primal, primordial aspect of our bodies and biology. It is our biology, the processes of birth, sex, and death. Of destruction and creation in the cycle of life and death that is felt most intimately in and through the body, through the psychosomatic lunar dimension of our being. It's carried Pluto in our feelings and emotions and in our relationships. Moon Pluto is an insatiable hunger for life. Kalima consumes, consumes in the destruction and creative process. Moon Pluto consumes life with a passion and ferocity. There is strength and power in that consuming of life. Consuming the mother's breasts, consuming the mother's time, consuming the mother's energy, consuming food, consuming sex. It just takes everything in deeply, fully, wholly into the depths of one's being, into the great dark abyss. It is intense. It can be overwhelming and overpowering. The depth of emotion and feeling that Moon Pluto carries from day one until death. A depth and intensity of relationships that are so karmic and so deep and impassioned that they can be absolutely terrifying. That when one's attachment of the moon comes into play, the safety net of separateness is taken away and the Pluto consumes the other person, takes them fully into their being, into their body, sexually, eating them, drinking them. It's alchemical. It's transfigurative. Literally, one's body and one's vessel is transfigured. Transformation and evolution is just steps along the way to the alchemical transfiguration of the body and the emotions of Moon Pluto. These people are here to transform and evolve their relationships, their emotions and feelings and their body. And they're here to do that with their family. It's an ancestral transformation. It's the inheritance of ancestral karma and memories that is shamanic, that is deep, deep down into the soil, through the layers of the earth to the magnum liquid core, the lava, the heat, the passion, the intensity. The moon is our family and Pluto is drama. 
Pluto is the drama of life. Moon Pluto, it's family drama. The theater of life is so often the theater of the family drama and the intensity of that family drama. And there's a whole bunch of psychological questions that come into play that we'll get to in a little bit, looking at the family system. But before we do that, the moon is the women in our life, the feminine principle. And with moon Pluto, it's powerful women. A moon Pluto woman can be a powerful force of nature where the driving force of evolution is coursing through her veins and her body, impacting every person she comes into contact with. Moon Pluto for a man can be a really intense relationship with the mother, being in relationship with really intense, powerful women, sometimes empowering, sometimes overpowering, sometimes destructive, sometimes creative, right? With Pluto, it's always a question. Destruction, creation. Moon Pluto shows us that every archetypal complex has a destructive and a creative side. It's our primal needs. The moon is our needs. And Pluto is that primal part. It's our primal needs. We need to eat. We need to fuck. We need to be in a safe environment with love and connection. And when we get that, we blossom and grow and are empowered and strong and magnificent and creative and driven. And when we don't, we're self and other destructive. We're harmful we can actually start cutting ourselves. Moon Pluto can be the cutter, the one that needs to feel because they're in so much pain and they're having to repress so much of their feelings and in their relationships, they have to cut to feel. Moon Pluto with that insatiable appetite can sometimes be related to eating disorders, bulimia and anorexia, that thirst, that hunger for life, to go deep, to be raw. And depending on how that child's emotions and that child's power was dealt with in the family is gonna have a lot to do with how that being expresses themselves interpersonally and emotionally as they grow older. So with Pluto, it's always a question of how is the power being embodied? How is it being dealt with? If the child has moon Pluto, they're gonna be intense, they're gonna be powerful, and their emotions are gonna be super deep and raw, and sometimes very, very volcanic, coming into touch with rage and hatred and the mere image of love and embrace and joy. They love with their whole being, heart and soul. Nothing holds them back. There is no limit there. Unless the parents are afraid of the child's power. And if the child is shamed for their power, then they learn to repress it. They learn to repress their power, to repress their needs, to repress their emotions, to repress their body. Or conversely, if the child was given an, an emo, an, given an inappropriate amount of power, too much power for a child, then they can become dominating and controlling and manipulative and coercive in their relationships and the way that they express themselves emotionally. Moon Pluto can equally be the powerful mother Strong, deep, poised, empowered, driven. And it can also be equally the overpowering, dominating mother. And so a question of boundaries. Are there healthy boundaries here emotionally between 
the child and the parents and the child and the other siblings. Because if there are, that's one story. But if they're not, then Pluto can be those aspects of the psyche and of life that are darker, where we can get invasions of privacy and space, betrayal of boundaries, sexual abuse, physical abuse, sexualizing the child, using the child sexually. Feeling the powerful sexuality of the moon Pluto child and abusing that and using it for one's own self-interest. Or feeling and seeing the profound sexuality and libido of the young child and being afraid of it and so shaming the child for their sexuality. Shaming them at a young age and making them feel wrong and bad for being a sexual being. And so the child learns to hide or repress their sexuality and it becomes distorted. When the child is honored for being a sexual being and being a child, there's a love and appreciation of their sexuality, an openness to express it in a contained, guided way. Then usually that person comes across less so in a repressed way and more so in an empowered way, where they're using their power to influence and impact those around them in a positive, mutually enhancing, uplifting way, where they stoke the power in others to grow and blossom. Instead of there being competition or manipulation or coercion emotionally or interpersonally, there's a growing of power, like a fertile garden, watering the power so it can grow for the better. Pluto is our will, our will to power. And with the moon being more of the subconscious and sometimes unconscious part of ourselves, there can be a very strong will to power, a strong drive you see often early on in age. So driven, so ambitious. There's such a force of energy coursing through this being and it has to go somewhere and be expressed in some way in a safe, good, but wild way. Pluto needs to be wild. It's the fire dancer. It's the one going out into nature. It's the jaguar medicine. It's the serpent medicine. It's the kundalini second chakra uncoiling up through the body and coming out. It's the serpent rising. It's the Shiva Shakti Kali energy coming through the physical presence and energy field of this person that activates your own Kundalini, your own Shiva Shakti, just by being in the same place with them, dancing with them, having dinner with them, talking with them. It's a natural activating force of Shakti energy when it's free and able to express itself. With Pluto, we always have to ask this question about power struggles. And with the moon, sometimes there can be power struggles in the early childhood experience with the parents and the siblings. The moon is both our parents, but it's also our siblings. Was there respect there? Or was there domination and control? How we relate to our siblings has so much to do with how we relate to our peers as we get older. Were we bullied? Did we bully? These are all questions of Moon Pluto. How is power and domination and control used early on in childhood and in your most intimate relationships? There's also that dimension of the Moon where it's our emotional life. Some of the challenges of Moon Pluto can be emotional triangulation. So psychologically speaking, triangulation when there's, in this case, at least three people involved. And instead of having direct 
clear, honest communication between all three people going in all directions, flowing harmoniously, openly. Two people in the triangle gang up, form a tighter bond, and usually use it against the third person. And so if the parents emotionally triangulate the moon Pluto child, then that child often feels on the outside and inferior to the family system. Or if the mother uses the child to get her emotional needs met because it's not getting met with the partner, then the mother and the child triangulate against the partner. And so when any forms of these triangulations are happening, it's very unhealthy because there isn't balance in the system and there's always someone that's left out and then is the scapegoat. And we see this with Moon Pluto, the emotional scapegoat, where there's an evacuation of one's more difficult emotions and feelings and experiences and placed on the other person, the scapegoat, for them to carry the darkness of the group or the family or the system. All group dynamics do it. It's a, it's a human thing. Um, any group you're a part of, there's always a scapegoat. Eventually, maybe not right away, but eventually there's a scapegoat and the group pins all their shit that they don't like about themselves, their shadowy, unwanted stuff onto that person or people. And the Moon-Pluto person often can be the recipient of that shadow material emotionally from the group. The Moon is the group, it's the community, it's the emotion and the interpersonal space. And the Moon-Pluto person can be an easy kind of totem or token for being very intense or very dark or very, you know, oh, and then everyone can be like, yeah, look how crazy and fucked up they are. And then not looking at their own stuff and putting it on this other person. Oftentimes with Moon Pluto, we see a profound ability to work with somatic memories. Um, the moon being our body and our memories stored in our body, but being able to do really deep transformative ancestral work through the body. So actually getting body work done, ha um, having a dance practice um, where there's some sacred meditative way to be with the body that lends itself to um, catharsis, transformation and evolution that is not only happening for that person, but actually for their family, for their lineage, for their ancestors. So really working um, the DNA and, 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 and the ancestors actually being felt in and through the body. Moon Pluto also can relate to possession states, being emotionally or physically possessed. Um, and that can be you know, positive and negative. Um, but like a larger than life, overpowering emotional state, overtaking the body. Sometimes the needs of the moon Pluto person can feel so intense and deep and again, insatiable, not able to be filled that the experience of them by other people in their life can be overwhelming where it feels impossible to ever give that person what they need or want. There sometimes can be the experience of like an emotional black hole and it just like can't be filled. And so sometimes that's where we see things like eating disorders um, or cutting coming in, like where there can be abusive or destructive tendencies toward the body um, when there is a lack or something missing usually coming from attachment issues uh, early on in life uh, with the mom, with the family, um, or you know, with either parents. And so that person can walk around trying to fill that through their relationships as they get older. And there can almost be like a compulsive or obsessive tendency to try to consume the other person in the relationship and the other person in the relationship feeling just like completely overtaken, um, 
Now, sometimes people like that and they like being in a relationship with a moon Pluto person because of the depth and intensity and rawness that it feels so primal and wild that they really get off on living on that kind of edge and intensity. Whereas for other people, it's like absolutely paralyzing and suffocating and terrifying. Um, like it literally can become paralyzed in the relationship because it just feels way too um, dark and overpowering. And so it's always a question with Pluto, what's the relationship with the darkness and the shadow? Is there a space for it? Uh, is there communication around it? Are there healthy ways of expressing and channeling it? Like through dancing, um, you know, like the fire dancer, um, like going out into the wilderness and communing with the animals and speaking with the birds and the coyote and the deer. You know, it's like where with the moon does our sense of home and connection come from? And we can't always get all of that from people. Sometimes we need that from Mother Nature, from Gaia and from other forms. And moon Pluto especially needs that because the needs tend to be so deep and so powerful um, that oftentimes another human being really can't fulfill all of that. Sometimes there can be in the relationship a forced dependency. Um, sometimes I'll see this where um, the uh, mom will force the child to need her in ways that um, are inappropriate, that the child doesn't actually need or want. And then the child is um, dependent on the mother in a way that makes the child feel um, shameful and guilty and bad and wrong. And depending on you know the degree of it and how long it goes on for, um, it can it can it can get dark, it can get pretty intense. Again, it, you know, it can relate to um, abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse, um, when those lines are crossed. But I've even seen it with like um, overfeeding the child or like um, needing the child to stay physically close all the time past an age that um, the child would actually be wanting more independence. Um, and then sometimes it can be reversed where the child needs the mom more than the mom's able to show up. And so the child isn't ready to wean, for example, if they're breastfeeding and the mom's just like, I can't do this anymore. Like, too, too close, too much. And this um, kind of pushing away or rejecting of that level of intimacy or that level of physical um, engagement, which for some women is extremely draining and causes great fatigue and like psychological illness. And sometimes the child wants things from the mom that the mom just can't give for whatever reasons that are not pathological at all, but the child can experience it as just terror and loss and rejection and shame. And so with Moon Pluto, it's often a question of feelings of rejection and like ways that that person might feel rejected or might have felt rejected um, very early on and just taking a look at what the coping mechanisms for that might be. Um, A really healthy expression of Moon Pluto is the ability to go very deep and then to titrate out, to pull out, so to go deep, 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 and then come out in a way that's actually very gentle and nourishing and nurturing. So the ability to be raw and powerful and even maybe go to somewhat kind of extreme places emotionally, physically, but then like actually be able to nurture oneself, right? The moon is how we nurture ourselves and like nurturing ourselves into deep places and then nurturing ourselves out of deep places. And so that ability to titrate in and out of um, deep, powerful spaces of consciousness. It's also um, the ability to have a lot of support, maternal support, feminine support, women's support, um, to go deep into your emotions and feelings and actually feeling really nurtured and held and loved 
as you have these powerful experiences that often are cathartic um, and sometimes convulsive, right? It's Moon Pluto is the animal shaking, right? It's like when we have trauma, we shake it off. That's what animals do. As soon as they get hurt, they shake. Well, humans do that too, except most of us, because we've been civilized, socialized, we don't shake. Sometimes we do. Um, sometimes we'll cry, you know, have all these different kind of responses. But Moon Pluto is the wild part of us that knows we need to shake off life and intense experiences or traumatic experiences that just come with being human. And so the ability to convulse or purge. And you see this a lot with Moon Pluto, the ability to not just transform and evolve the emotions, but to purge them. And this is why it can relate to actual bulimia is sometimes, um, you know, the purging becomes um, a literal purging. But Pluto wants to purge. That's what it does. It purifies, it cleanses, it detoxifies. And so there can be an emotional purging that needs to happen for Moon Pluto. Um, I'm going to open up the floor in a moment. I just want to see if there's anything else here. Okay, three, three more things. Um, when our emotions feel too overwhelming, whether that's to our own selves or to other people, our tendency is to hide them. And so it's that aspect of Pluto that can be hidden. And particularly if there's any sense of shame around it, you know, we really can super bury and hide. And so this question of repression, but I think it's really important for us not to pathologize repression because repression is a very natural human thing that we all do and it serves us because we need to be able to repress material and compartmentalize until we're ready to deal with it. So if we are not resourced to deal with some kind of crisis or emergency or trauma or just like intense situation that's happened in our life, we repress it. And that helps us continue to function and get by until we're resourced and ready enough to face it. Repression only becomes a problem when we repress past a certain point and we do it at the expense of ever looking at and dealing with the material that got repressed. So if we don't ever end up making the time and space to digest it and metabolize it, which is what Moon Pluto is about, it's about digesting and metabolizing life, that if we don't do that, then that's when the repression can um, become a problem and show up psychosomatically in ways that are not healthy for us. So with, it's important that repression exists, but it's also important that we get the help and support we need to work with the repressed material once we're ready to do so. Um, I also want to just give an example of um, when things become too overwhelming in relationship or emotionally, um, what happens for me, and maybe this will resonate for some of you, is there can just be the real experience for me where um, I can't think anymore. And um, I also, everything begins to feel very pressurized. So there's like an extreme sense of pressure. And I often also then stop breathing. And so we can really check in with our bodies, the lunar part of ourselves, to understand how are we doing with what's happening in our environment. And if we can't think anymore or we feel pressure or we stopped breathing, then we might need to take a pause and step back and take some time until we're ready again. And so the moon helps us use the intelligence of the body to check in with how we are digesting and metabolizing whatever is happening in our environment, which is the moon. Lastly, I want to come back to what Verana said earlier with the moon also being our children and um, bringing in this part about um, the queer aspect of um, the sun-moon conjunction and just wanting to say that 
um, on the break, Travis and I talked about that. And with Travis also having the sun moon conjunct at times, he's described it as feeling queer in that aspect of himself and really taking in like, wow, yeah, because there's such a sameness there with the sun moon being in the same sign and the sun and the moon, the masculine feminine or the mother father is one ways to understand those coming through in this queer way. But that our, we often think of the moon in our chart as our relationship to our parents and specifically to our mother, but also our siblings. And then our intimate relationships as we get older, as our primary attachments are formed. But it's also important to remember that the moon in our chart is also our children and how we relate to our children and our own inner child. And so with moon Pluto, um, if you are a parent with moon Pluto, to recognize that your children are probably going to carry a very strong Plutonic quality. And that on one level, that's a mirror back to you and an opportunity to work with that energy with them in that relationship. But that if your child has Moon Pluto, then there are a lot of ways that we can help them not feel shameful or bad about the level of intensity that they bring, um, whether that's how they relate, how they feel, um, or just in their own sexuality, and to support that appetite for life by encouraging them to be hungry, and um, but encouraging them to be hungry in a way that is um, manageable and sustainable for their age that they're at and the psychological development that they're at. And that if we give our children too much to consume, that that can overwhelm them. And if we don't give them enough to consume, right, that can thwart them. And so it's just a question of gauging our children's appetites for life and helping to teach them how to digest and metabolize reality and their own emotions so that they don't need to be afraid of them um, or that they are, are comfortable with things like fear and terror as a natural part of the human condition. And that's something Moon Pluto really teaches us is that terror and fear and the darker parts of psyche are there for a reason and that we can actually have experiences of terror and fear that aren't so terrifying, that don't destroy us or stop us in our tracks from living and expressing in our relationships. The dances aren't an interpretation of the words associated with the archetype or of how an archetype makes me feel. Um, the dances themselves are coming from fundamental movement qualities that I've assigned to each archetype. 